Mr. Speaker, the next fiscal year will be difficult, but Canadians can be fully confident that we will overcome whatever hardships may lie ahead in 2009 and beyond. We will protect the future by maintaining strong fiscal and financial management. We take no pleasure in saying that, despite our best efforts, this may not be enough to keep a small surplus on the books. But in situations like this, it would be misguided to simply engineer a surplus just to be able to say we have one. Mr. Speaker, today's statement lays out a plan that keeps our budget balanced for now. However, in the weeks ahead, we will determine the extent to which we will inject additional stimulus to our economy, joining the efforts of our international partners. Any additional actions to support the economy will have an impact on the bottom line numbers in our next budget. These actions, or a further deterioration in global economic conditions, could result in a deficit. We do not take the potential of a deficit lightly. We cannot ask Canadians to tighten their belts during tougher times without looking in the mirror. Canadians have a right to look to government as an example. We have a responsibility to show restraint and respect for their money. Canadians' tax dollars are precious. They must not be spent frivolously or without regard to where they came from. Canadians pay taxes so governments can provide essential services. They trust the people they elect to serve society with that money, not serve themselves. The truth is, tax dollars have been supporting political parties for a long time. For example, we take advantage of reimbursements on our election spending. Canadians also receive a tax credit on their donations to political parties. This is a generous allotment of tax dollars to politicians. It ought to be sufficient for all of us. But we ask for much more in the form of a $1.75 subsidy for every vote we receive in an election. Canadians pay their own bills, and for some Canadians that is getting harder to do. Political parties should pay their own bills too, and not with excessive tax dollars. Even during the best of economic times, parties should count primarily on the financial support of their own members and their own donors. Today, our government is eliminating the $1.75 per vote taxpayer subsidy for politicians and their parties, effective April 1, 2009. There will be no free ride for political parties. There never was. The freight was being paid by the taxpayers. This is the last stop on the route. There will be no free ride for anyone else in government either. And perhaps the most controversial proposal in the fiscal update today is the one Jim Flaherty uh, was referring to, to cut taxpayer subsidies to political parties. Since 2004, any party that receives at least 2% of the popular support across the country receives public money for each vote they obtain in a federal election. Based on the results of last month's election, the Conservatives would lose $10 million in public funding, but that's only 37% of their revenues, since the party gets most of its funding from donations. The Liberals would lose $7.7 .7 million, but that represents 63% of their revenues. This proposal from the Finance Minister, uh, more than any other, has the opposition parties threatening to bring down the government. The people who are being laid off day in and day out were counting on the government to step forward with the kind of economic strategy that at least put some light at the end of the tunnel. And they were counting on a government that might understand what they're facing when they go home with a pink slip. And they were counting on this government to step forward, like other governments around the world have done and say we're going to stand behind our businesses, we're going to stand behind our workers, we're going to stand behind our communities, we're going to support Canadians instead of just looking after ourselves. And they turned it right around. They turned it right around, Mr. Speaker. And that's not acceptable. What we see is a smokescreen. We've seen it before. I had hoped that it would be different. I met with the Prime Minister. I met with all the leaders here and said, can't we find ways to work together? 
I've done it in minority parliament after minority parliament. And Canadians are wanting us to work together. Did we hear the slightest indication from this Prime Minister and his representatives on his front bench that they were prepared to work together? Not in the slightest. Instead, it was abuse and insults and putting down people who serve in elected office. Well, I'm sick and tired of it, Mr. Speaker, and I think Canadians are too. Here, here, here. Here, here. The message coming from our caucus is very clear. We cannot support these measures, and the government has to think again. So you want change? to see changes. What kind of changes? We need to discuss. The, go the government wants parliamentarians to be responsible about uh, responding to this crisis, to make sacrifices. Uh, we're prepared to consider all kinds of sacrifices. We understand the seriousness of the crisis. But the measures that they've introduced don't address the nature of the crisis. There's nothing, there's no stimulus package. There's nothing in the auto sector. There's nothing on forestry. I could go on. They've got to come back and give us something that addresses the crisis seriously and unites parliamentarians instead of dividing them. The last time that we played this game of chicken, four or five times, how many times, you all, it would always end with the Liberals standing up, a handful of Liberals voting symbolically against something. Can you assure us that, that this game won't end the same way? I can't assure you of anything. I'll just tell you what I know about the mood of my party. We are tired of sitting down. Is that clear? Yeah, Thank you. Know, I, I just think it's, it's, it's extraordinarily mean-spirited. Uh, and it shows, I think, a complete lack of understanding of what, uh, <laughs> what public financing of political parties is all about. Every modern democracy has an element of public support for political parties. And the idea that this would now be uh, destroyed by the action of one government attempting to take advantage of, a, of an economic crisis uh, to somehow turn it to their own partisan advantage is, uh, is disgraceful. And for that alone, this government uh, just needs a, needs a wake-up call. They've got to give their heads a shake. This is, just a, this is not the way to respond to an economic crisis by saying we're gonna, the first thing we're going to do is punish the, other, punish the political parties in the country. That's a ludicrous proposition. People are resentful of the fact that they're choosing to turn an economic crisis to their own political advantage, which I think is just shows how you, can't, you literally cannot take the mean-spirited partisanship out of the heart of this government. No matter how civil they try to be, you just can't, it just won't go away. And uh, I think Canadians will look at this and just with a sense of absolute astonishment that they would choose the moment of an economic crisis to, to try to turn that into a partisan advantage for themselves is, is just preposterous. To turn... Wake up, Canadians. This is a government that wants to put its own partisan advantage ahead of your job, ahead of your home, ahead of your savings, ahead of your pensions. This is a government that is prepared to put all those things at risk in order to perpetuate their own personal political advantage, their own partisan advantage. And I think it's disgraceful that we have a government that does that. The Conservatives have increased program spending by $40 billion, 24% increase since they got there. The so-called uh, perk for the political class, this sum that's being given by vote, represents one twentieth of one percent of the increase in program spending since the Conservatives got there. So it's a transparent fraud for the Conservatives to say that this is a measure of fiscal restraint. It's a way of trying to restrain the ability of the opposition parties to do their job in the public interest. I think that anyone who knows the Canadian constitutional system will be able to explain to you that long before talking about an election, if a government loses the confidence of Parliament, there are a lot of other things that will happen before we would have an election, especially so soon after the last one.